What I would like to do is first provide a, a very brief review of how the financial markets have responded to the oil fields, the oil spill, and then what I want to do is very briefly raise some policy issues um, and talk about the economics of a moratorium on um, this very deep water drilling. I'm not really sufficiently informed on these issues to give you a real opinion um, on whether or not we should be drilling um, in deep water. That's not my expertise, but um, I do want to provide a framework for thinking about this and hopefully others on the panel and maybe in the audience will have um, you know, more informed views than I do on this. How do I do this here? Okay, what I want to start with, oh, okay, great, um, is just a brief review of what's happening in the financial markets. Um, as we can see, what I've got plotted here is BP, Transocean, and Halberton stock price. Um, since the time of the announcement of the initial spill, um, we're starting out at 100% of their market value, and we can see that uh, they've lost up to 20 to 25% of market value. Um, my colleagues have said, and Andarco, how do you pronounce this? Um, Anadarko um, should also be up there, and they've actually been hit harder. Basically, we've seen a drop in market value, depending on how we calculate it, of anywhere between 30 and 40 billion dollars. Um, this should be compared to estimates of the total cost of the cleanup um, and economic damages to the region of probably somewhere around 10 billion. Um, hopefully, as part of the discussion, um, we can ask the question of whether that 10 billion is too low um, and how to compare this 30 to 40 billion dollar loss in market value um, to the estimates of the damages. Can we move to the next one? Okay, what I wanted to show on this slide is just a comparison with um, Conoco and Exxon with BP. The question was, is there contagion for the entire industry? Are people feeling sour about oil companies in general because of that? Are we expecting a lot of new regulations that are going to hurt oil companies in general? Um, are we seeing a lot of damage to the industry as a whole? And what I take from this graph is that from the perspective of at least Conoco and Exxon, this is a non-event. Okay, they're not directly related. Um, and directly involved in the spill, and their stock prices haven't been damaged at all. Next, please. Okay, what I've got on this is I've added another oil company which I found interesting, which is Petrobras. Okay, Petrobras is a large Brazilian oil company, and Petrobras is making a very large bet on very deep water drilling off the coast of Brazil. And as we can see here, Petrobras um, is hurt as much as BP in terms of loss of stock market value. Okay, so Petrobras has been hammered with BP. Um, Petrobras has no connection directly to the Gulf, um, yet Petrobras stock price has dropped, suggesting to me at least that what the market is saying is that very deep water drilling could be in trouble. Okay, so Exxon and um, Conoco which are not betting big on deep water drilling. They have not been affected. Um, Petrobras has been affected as much as um, BP. Okay, I also wanted to look at forward contracts on oil. Okay, so the question that's going to be raised in this policy debate is, if we stop deep water drilling, is that gonna cause a shortage of oil in the future? Okay, so the question is, are the financial markets worried about five years in the future when all this deep water oil is supposed to come online? Um, is that oil not going to come online? And as a result, we're going to have shortages and much higher prices. Okay, so if you look at the long-term forward contracts on oil, um, this looks like a non-event to me. Okay, we're not seeing estimates, we're not seeing expectations of high oil prices in five years because of a moratorium on drilling today. Okay, that doesn't seem to be a big event. And what we have here is the difference between Brent and WTI oil. Okay, so one question is, we're gonna have a shortage of oil in the Gulf. That, of course, isn't going to affect Europe, and that's going to make WTI expensive relative to Brent. 
Okay, we're seeing the opposite. Um, this looks like a steady increase, um, but actually the change is pretty small and I would not say is significant. Um, but if anything, the results are WTI is getting cheap relative to Brent, which again is completely inconsistent with the idea that we're expecting a shortage of WTI oil. Okay, um, let's move on. Um, I did a quick survey on Friday. Uh, we have uh, about 50 people that are, um, that we can email surveys to um, that are relatively informed about uh, these types of issues. And the question that I asked was, what's the most likely explanation of the large difference between the stock price responses and expected cleanup costs? Okay, as I mentioned at the outset, uh, the stock prices of the involved companies have dropped by close to $40 billion, and at least in the press, um, they're talking about uh, no more than $10 billion in cleanup costs and economic damages. So the question is, is the market just overreacting to these events? 31% um, said that's the most likely possibility. Um, the second, um, which I hope we can have more discussion on, is the press just underestimating the total damages and cleanup costs. Only 14% thought that was the case. Um, the third one was, is this just a sign that BP is incompetent um, and we're just basically hammering BP's stock price, not just because of the damages to the Gulf, but because we now know that BP is not um, the greatest of oil companies and it's going to hurt them in the future. 21% uh, said that. And about a third said that um, there will be a moratorium on deep water drilling and that's going to hurt these companies going forward. Next, please. Okay, in the conclusion of my talk, I wanted to just raise some policy issues. Okay, I don't think we're going to, you know, permanently decide we don't want to drill in deep water. Okay, eventually I think we're going to drill in very deep water. I think eventually we're going to drill off the coast of California and off the coast of Florida. You know, it may not be in 10 years, it may not be in 20 years, but eventually we're going to drill later if not now. So it's not really should we drill or should we not drill. The question really is should we drill now or should, should we be drilling later? And the trade-off really is a trade-off between um, drilling our own oil today versus buying more Middle East oil today. Um, and again, it's a question of now versus later. Just a very, very brief review of simple economics. Um, there's a result, and I think it's due to a guy in the 1930s named um, Hotelling. And what he shows is that when markets are competitive and there's no technical progress, okay, two very important assumptions. So um, drilling today in some sense is equivalent to drilling 10 years from now in terms of cost and safety. If that's the case, then it's always best to extract the least costly oil first. Okay, so we know deep water drilling is expensive oil. Um, Saudi oil is cheap to produce. So under these conditions, you always want to use up the Saudi oil before we drill in deep water. Now, if we expect that we're going to have technical progress and the technical progress is going to make um, deep water drilling both safer and less expensive, okay, that's going to tilt us towards even more delay. Okay, we want to delay deep water drilling even if there's no technical progress, okay, but if we expect technical progress, we want to wait till later when it's going to be cheaper and safer. Next, please. Okay, that's not the real world, of course. Okay, the real world is, um, and I think this is actually controversial, but I would say that OPEC has monopoly power, and of cons as consumers of oil, we would like to do th things <coughs> that will, in some sense, limit um, the pricing power of OPEC. Okay, so by having alternative oil to OPEC, by drilling in the Gulf, um, we are in fact um, limiting the monopoly power of OPEC and there's economic reasons why we would want to do that. The second point that people raise is that the U.S. is now running an unsustainable balance of payments deficit. <coughs> um, and Pickens was testifying in Congress last month and 
he was saying that we're currently running a deficit of over $30 billion per month, and about two-thirds of that is because of the importation of overseas oil. Okay, so again, it's certainly the case that um, drilling in the Gulf or not drilling in the Gulf is going to affect our trade deficits. Next, please. Okay, the other point that people raise is that increasing production in the low-cost co Middle East, okay, we want to produce where the cost is lower, but that's going to put money in the hands of people that aren't always friendly. Okay, now one thing that I want to point out with all these issues is there's clearly a time dimension to the political problems as well as the t trade deficit problems. Okay, it's always going to be a trade-off between now versus later, and it's not a question of are we going to produce in the Gulf versus produce in the Middle East. It's a question about whether we want to produce more in the Gulf now and less in the Middle East now versus producing less in the Gulf now, um, which means we've got to produce more in the Middle East later. Um, so there's always that time trade-off. I guess the question is, should we be using our oil now or should we be using their oil now? Do we want to be dependent on them now or do we want to be dependent on them in the future? Let's move on to the next. Um, one final consideration. Um, when we look at the incentive to wait till later, um, the biggest argument in favor of waiting till later is that in the future, um, we're going to be able to do this more cheaply. It's going to be less expensive and probably safer. So if we wait 10, 15 years, okay, it's not going to be so costly and the chances of a spill is going to be greatly reduced. Okay, now the big problem with that argument um, is that we've got a industry that's on this path of technical improvement. Um, the success of extracting oil from increasingly hostile environments is extremely impressive. And if we simply put a halt on drilling now, hoping that our technology will be much better in 10 years, the question is, will the technology improve if we're not drilling? Um, hopefully someone like Tad, who understands the technology better than I do, will be able to comment on how we're improving because we're drilling versus improving because of R&D.